All right, y'all, we're going to start, we're going to try to start this talk. I know it's late in the day. I know we've had a lot of incredible, incredible content ahead of us. We're going to try to start this with a growth hack. So I need y'all's help. I need y'all's help in the audience with some claps. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Well, we didn't expect to have a Patricio, but the legendary, the one, the only creator of Poaps just came up on stage and gave me a hug, so that's great, too. Give him a round of applause. How are we doing on the screen? We still can't see the screen! We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, we might need to transfer the port or something. We can switch it if we need. Oh, I unplugged it. Did you switch it here? Try that. Oh, you did? All right. How's East Denver going so far? Good? Good? Can I get a thumbs up? Yeah. All right. I think our slides are working. Wow. There we go. All right, y'all. So uh, I'm Ben. I work for a project called Optimism, a collective called Optimism, a DAO called Optimism. Can I get a raise of hands if, I, if you've heard of this vaguely? Oh, yeah, that's what I like to see. Heck yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some public goods funding today. Who, knows that, who knew that Optimism does public goods funding? Yeah, okay, that's good. I like the percentages are pretty high there. I like it. Okay, so today I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about what's going on in the world of public goods and Optimism. Then I'm going to talk about what it means to be a sustainable public goods project. Then I'm going to talk about some things that I think we could vastly improve as an industry, as a community. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what Optimism is doing to help solve those things. Sound good? Yeah. OK, so what's going on in the world of Optimism and public goods? A whole lot of stuff. The OP stack. Who's heard of the OP stack? Yeah, OK, OK, I'll take it, I'll take it. The OP stack is the most overpowered public good in the game, as we like to say. And it is basically the code that powers optimism. It's modular, EVM equivalent, blazing fast, dirt cheap. I don't know why I left the bottom two is not their own bullets. I don't know. But three bullets are better than four. The other thing that's going on is we are going not multi-chain, but super chain. So who heard about the base announcement last week? Yeah. So that's running on the OP stack. My co-founder, Carl, will give a lot more incredible, incredible content about what it means to go super chain, what it means for us as a community to scale together, not apart. Um, but for now, I'll just say it's happening, it's exciting, and go watch Carl's talk tomorrow, same time as this one. Another huge thing that's going on in this world of the OP stack as a public good is that there's a new, new core dev, which is Coinbase. That is a big deal. That is very, very, very exciting. Can I get a pause for that? Yeah. OK, we're hyped for that for sure. One of the things, though, that I think we need to acknowledge as a community and determine as a community is whether or not this public good stuff is just made up and a bunch of baloney or if it's really going to work this time. Why is crypto going to make public goods and open source software sustainable when historically it's been a very, very different picture? So is it real or are we just like a feel-good ink? I guess I should have played the gorillas on the, on the mic first because that's a great gorilla song. So honestly, the bigger mic drop, I think, than Coinbase launching an L2 in many ways is that Base will commit a portion of transaction fee revenue back to the Optimism Collective. That is huge. That is a Fortune 500 company committing a portion of revenue to a DAO for free and open source code that they could have just ran with on their own. That is sustainable public goods in action. So that's the real mic drop. Let me get an applause for that. Yeah. 
Hype, hype. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you. But what needs to be said about this is that sustainability and getting that to work means focus. This works because the collective is committed to funding the public goods which make the whole thing possible. So I don't know if you've heard of our classic slogan, if not optimism.io slash vision. The impact to the collective should be rewarded by profit to the individual. If we want to make the impact of public goods equal to the profit of the creators of public goods, then we need to define the impact that we're talking about here. Very, very, very important. It's about closing the loops. We need that focus. Following so far? Good? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now I want to talk about something that I think, as a community, we really, really, really need to improve, which is related to all of this. And that is the notorious, the famous, the Twitter shill covering ecosystem map. Raise your hand. Have you ever seen one of these before? Not necessarily for optimism, for some ecosystem. Yeah, okay, of course, of course. And they're really cool, right? They're really exciting. Let's see, can I scroll here? Yeah, we can look at the different DAOs and NFTs and on-ramps and optimism, right? Okay, and this is fantastic. This is just something I pulled off of Twitter today, um, or I guess Google Images via Twitter. That was just an unofficial thing that the community made. And I really appreciate doing that. But the reality is, as I fix my Zoom here, whoa, the reality is, we can do so much better than that, and I really think that we need to. What is missing from this? I mean, at its core, the real problem here is it's just like a list of icons on a grid with no real meaning and interpretation. And there's so much more richness to the crypto economies that we're building that we are completely, completely neglecting when we create these kinds of diagrams, right? There's no notion of the relationships between the apps in this ecosystem, right? There's an NFT bucket, there's an NFT exchange, there's an NFT project. It makes sense that those things are close to each other, but are they, are, are they as icons next to each other? I don't think that's very useful. Secondly, it does not talk at all about the economic interactions which are going down. And what kind of ecosystem map that's trying to describe an ecosystem of crypto economics isn't talking about this. Where is value being extracted? Where is value just being provided by impactful public goods? And there's also no relationships between many of the connected categories that we see here, right? So the graph is a wonderful decentralized infrastructure project. Just about every, well, I shouldn't, I don't know about every, but many, 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 many dApps use the graph, an incredible developer tool. Why is it off in the corner and completely unrelated when you look at this landscape? It just looks like its own icon. It doesn't make sense. We must do better. Following? Yeah? Makes sense? Yeah, okay. So how are we going to do that? Okay, I have a dirty secret. The traditional economics and technology world actually has done some cool things here. And it turns out that one of the things that they've done is figured out better ways to describe these systems. So I hate to do it, but I'm going to borrow a little bit from the traditional world of the old economy that we're going to replace in you know, short order. What we need is something that is not a map, but is more akin to a value chain or even like a digital supply chain. If we want to make impact equal profit, we need to understand the relationships in our ecosystems between impact and between profit. Okay, so that's what I'm going to now talk about, the value chain. It's not a new chain. Many optimism chains are coming. This is not one of them. It's chain is in supply, not is in block. And it's actually shockingly, shockingly simple, OK? Here's all we have to do. Take two entities, right? These would have been apps or those little icons in that old diagram, and connect the impact that one has on the other and the profit that one gives to the other, OK? Incredibly simple, not, you know, not rocket science, but an incredibly valuable thing it turns out to do. It gives you a lot more information, a lot more insight, than if you just throw up all the apps and their logos on a screen, right? OK. So what's an example? Here's a very simple example of this, describing the relationship between Uniswap and optimism, right? Optimism clearly has an impact on Uniswap. It affords cheap block space, right, because it's a roll-up. And Uniswap returns value 
by providing transaction fees, right? Those fees are much cheaper. That's the point of optimism. It's wonderful, but there still are some there. And we need to acknowledge and talk about those relationships. This, because it's so generic, can be expanded to a massive, massive, massive map over time, right? So here's one more zoomed out step, right? In addition to talking about Uniswap, we can also introduce the concept of traders on Uniswap and liquidity providers on Uniswap, right? Again, there's impact and there's profit. Uniswap provides a great impact to traders. They get access to decentralized trades. The traders have a portion of their fees on Uniswap going back to Uniswap. Liquidity providers are making the LP fees, and they're providing liquidity into Uniswap itself. OK, so I, I know that this is not as pretty. It doesn't have the logos in place. It doesn't have the cool gradient background that we started in the beginning. But what it does have, we, I think, is a lot more useful information about what is actually going on in these crypto systems. OK, now let's return to the original problem statement. So I brought up the OP stack in the beginning, right? The question is, how do we put the OP stack into this diagram? Well, impact is pretty clear. Right? The source code of the OP stack, which is an MIT licensed public good, that is clearly having a huge impact on optimism. We wouldn't be able to run a network unless we had the code to do so. But what we're missing is any notion of profit back to the OP stack. How does the OP stack make money? On its own, it's a public good. It's just some code. Right? We need to fix that. More so, this is true for all of the dependencies of the OP stack. So one of the huge efforts that we've made in building Bedrock, the most recent release of the OP stack, upgrade to mainnet coming soon, is making it as Ethereum equivalent as humanly possible. What does that mean? That means taking the incredible battle-tested code that has been running and powering the Ethereum network for a long time and making as few changes to it as possible in building optimism. So not only is optimi can you guys see that pointer? Yes. Oh, not only is optimism uh, benefiting in an, uh, in an unprofited way from the source code of the OP stack. The same is true of Geth as one of the critical dependencies of the OP stack. So, what do we do? This ultimately is the focused, deliberate goal that I would propose should be the, the objective of the collective in its public goods funding efforts. The ultimate goal should be to fix the parts of the value chain where we see a purple impact, but we don't see on its own a green profit, right? So we take that, those transaction fees that were here, right? And we redirect them both to the OP stack and the dependencies which made it possible based on the impact that we observe from the source inheritance. So this is the goal of public goods funding in a targeted, sustainable manner. It is to fix the value chain that the crypto economy that optimism represents uh, does. And I want to be clear, this is a very small piece, but these arrows of impact and profit are extremely generic, right? We could expand, right, if we go way back here, right? We could expand every one of these into, I don't know, probably thousands, I don't know how many things there are there, thousands of arrows and hundreds of applications and put them all together into one cohesive picture for Optimism's crypto economy. Every chain in the super chain, every app on those super chains, every tool that the developers use, and every fee that gets generated in the system. This should be the goal, and this is how we make public goods funding sustainable. Um, okay, this is a no-shill space, so very, very quickly, is this all talk? No. Next week, voting starts to distribute 10 million OP tokens to over 300 potential uh, nominations via the votes of 70 unique citizens, optimism.io slash retropgf. I think that deserves a round of applause. Yeah! Woo! So we're actually, we're actually doing it. It's actually going to happen next week. Okay, I have no, I have not looked at the time, but I was hoping to get some questions in. So uh, come up to the front if you got some questions, or raise your hand, shout it out. Oh, come on, who's gonna break the ice? I know we've got questions, I'm insane. I must have said something wrong.
Yeah, so let me, let me just repeat the question because it is loud AF in the incredible ETH Denver. So the question was, um, in this diagram that I had here, who is advocating for the Go Ethereum node? Obviously, there is a very loud purple colored person up here that's going to advocate for the OP stack. What about Go Ethereum? Um, well, a few things. First of all, I, I think pretty much all of the um, Ethereum, both consensus and execution clients, are eligible and were nominated in the next round. And the thing that I should stress is that while advocacy will clearly play a factor in the politics of voting and this sort of thing, it is in the best interest of everybody in the collective to be fairly rewarding this value. This is a competitive advantage. It's not a nice to have. That's sort of the core point here. Because if Go Ethereum contributed you know, 90% of the L2 execution node in the OP stack, and it got 0% of the reward for that, what we are doing is we are setting a bad precedent for the next Go Ethereum, because crypto is going to take years to really build out and scale an infrastructure. So it's not about who's going to advocate. It's about how are we going to ensure that the collective sets the precedent to keep this going. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? I don't know. How much time do we have? Should I play another song? I would also take a song request. We've got four minutes. Oh, OK, perfect. Come on. I know someone else has a question. Shout it out. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so the question was, when this goes back to the OP stack, what does that actually mean, right? So this gets down into the mechanics of how we're going to go about our public goods funding rounds, right? And that's certainly going to iterate and change over time. The way it exists today is basically a process of nominations of the public goods that we think that the Citizens House should fund, voting, and then distribution. And so really what it means to fund the, the OP stack, it really, I mean, in reality, what I should be doing here is like probably putting some core developers, right, like, like OP Labs, for example, and have, the, and have the arrow pointing to them. Ultimately, of course, you can't fund a code base. You fund people that are developing the code base. And again, this is exactly the point of like having many levels of impact, right? Because you could even imagine a purple arrow here to like the Go, uh, you know, compression library or the Go standard cryptography library, and the same applies all the way down. And in fact, one of the things that we have in this next retro funding round is a collection that uh, the citizens can, can vote for that has all of the dependencies in the GoLang uh, tree for the Optimism Mono Repo, um, aka the Mono Repo of the OP stack. Yeah, so at the end of the day, what it means to fund the public goods of uh, code is it means to fund the people that helped create that code. Yes, last question. Is it possible? Oh, my goodness. Is it possible to automate this in the future? That was the question. So it, for the Optimism Collective, it's very important to us that we empower citizens. The Citizens House does public goods funding. It's one person, one vote. So while it's possible to automate, we want to start there. But should we be automating? Yes. I, I probably think that we'll see this, uh, maybe not in the next year, but what I am dying to see is a retro funding round that commits to a chat GPT prompt where you input out, that says output the amount of impact that all of these pull requests had to the Optimism stack, and then you paste in all of the pull requests in the past year and then that outputs a bunch of numbers. So that would be an example of automation. And at the end of the day, if you want to see, shockingly, this is not the craziest talk I've ever given. If you go to my DevCon talk from last year, I will describe how, in the long run, it's possible that we should view the citizen's house as basically a reward function for the global super intelligence that emerges instead of making capitalists uh, get richer and richer and richer and richer from these AI. So anyway, that's even crazier stuff. I think that's all the time that I got. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.